in this video we are going to discuss about route summarization so what is route summarization route summarization is exactly like vlsm but in the opposite direction so how it got introduced and what is the need of it you can see here as the network increases the number of entries in the routing table also increases so for this purpose the route summarization has come into picture here and you can see raj routing tables increase processing time and also response time on the routers and you can see this reduces routing tables and networks and can be grouped together or summarized so that uh, the routing table the length will be decreased so the response from the router also is very fast and you can see here these networks are contiguous subnets so that they they start or they have the slash notations like slash 24 etc so you can see here there are many subnets and all the subnets are connected to router a and it has to pass to router b so from router a to router b when the routing table passes from one table to other here you can see that the response time or the router act activities time would be very less so what happens here the route summarization takes place and this will become as a single ip address and it will be forwarded to router b here you can see here summarization is similar to vlsm variable length subnet mask and in the opposite direction when you use vlsm you move from right to left so here right to left in the sense like slash 24 slash 25 slash 26 and etc from to till the fourth end and also you can see that summarization you will move to left that means from 27 to 24 24 to 21 like so you will come base so that it is exactly opposite to vlsm so you can take here clearly if you remember this following you can you can do the route summarization very easily so you can only summarize in block sizes so you can only summarize in block sizes that is 128 64 and 32 and 16 etc the network address used for summarized address is the first network address in the block so in the block the network address which is used for the route summarization is the only first network address in the block and also for example if we take the summarizing this ip address which is 192.168.8.0 through 192.168.15.0 so to find the block size you can use and eight networks so block size would be eight can be used that means from 8.0 to 15.0 you can use only the block size that is eight networks so you can take another example very clearly which elaborates how the route summarization works here is you can see another example is 172.16.0.0 through 172.16.35.0 so how route summarization is working here you can see the block size of 32 and the mask subnet mask of 224 so how it happens so it starts from 172.16.0.0 to 255.255 the mask is 224 because the octet which is the biggest octet is the third octet so 224.0 but you will only summarize the network this to 31 because the reason if you take if you minus 255 minus 224 you get 31 so from 0.0 to 31.0 so based on the block size you can only summarize networks till 31.0 you can take another example here so it has a block size of 64 and a mask of 192 so this will give you the summary address of 0.0 to 192.0 this is the subnet mask so how you summarize till what extent you will summarize you can see here the summarized network start from 0.0 and from 255 minus 92 gives you 63 so you get 172.16.63.0 so you summarize the ip addresses from 0.0 to 63.0 so it depends on the network actually and you can clearly see that by planning or adding a network from 36 or 63 if you add 63 the second example fits the best one but if you add 36 the first example fits the best one so you can take a clear example of the third example where the address starts from 16.0 and has a subnet mask of 224 i needed to find the which network can be sub summarized so here it is very clear that it starts from 16.0 and subnet mask the third octet has 224 so 255 minus 224 it will come with 11 so here you can summarize till 172.10.16.0 to 
to so it is very clear that this mask also depends with the block size of the network so you can take these as example final examples it all has the same class address 192.168.1.0 slash notation 25 and all also has 192.168.1.128 slash 26 and followed till 192.26 so when you try to figure out the summary address then it, you can clearly see here it starts from 1.0 with slash notation 25 and ends with 1.0 with the slash notation 22 so we have to summarize based on the block address and also the slash notation helps here so if you take the essential understanding of how to troubleshoot of the IP addressing so this route summarization works out very good here and you can pass the routing table without having heavy bunch of the addresses mentioned in the routing table so you can see how to know the connectivity of the host address or the switch address which is available to us we can do this by three three methods here you can see ping what is ping packet internet grouper so with this packet internet grouper you can troubleshoot the connectivity of the host or connectivity of the other machine which is sitting on the other end so you, you can do like example ping space the ip address it will give the details of the connectivity if the connectivity is not established it will try and give you the message stating that loss is 100 percent so this will help you help in and this use the protocol called icmp so that as we discussed icmp is a messaging protocol so that whenever you whenever this messaging protocol goes and approaches the host when it does not respond it will give you the response back stating this is not getting connected so you can see trace route trace route is another common utility that is used with all operating systems so in some operating systems we also call as tracer or trace route command on the command line interface you can see it is used to find out hop between the source and the destination so how many hops are available and also useful to path taken by the packet so how the packet is transferred which path the tra packet is transferred and also the hop count between the source and the destination in this slide we are going to discuss about the arc table so sometimes it is useful to look at the arc table because arc table is maintained by the arc packets so it maps the ip address with the mac addresses so with layer 3 address with the layer 2 address and you can see that the mac address and ip address information are binded in the table and also about the ip config what is ip config sometimes that you need to verify the ip address destination address mac address default gateway subnet mask and also dns address of the host which is using well, on windows machine you, this information can be uh, you can find out this information by opening a terminal uh, the and with the command prompt and you can uh, use ip config and you can find out the details of the host which is using and also you can see here host a trying to reach host server a and server b but is not, not able to do so so take this an example so here host a is trying to reach server a and also server b so before looking at the ip addressing you should quickly check whether the network connectivity using the four steps here so what are the four steps by pinging pinging 127.0.0.1 which is the loopback address from the host and you will be knowing about the open terminal window of your operating system and using the ping utility you will be getting this result so pinging 127.0.0.1 will give you the ping result that you are able to communicate here so coming to the second step if you can see here the router a and router b are used as a communication between the host a server a and server b so this host a and server a and server b has a default gateway and they wanted to communicate between server a server b and the host so here the basic troubleshooting when when you do a troubleshooting we have to follow the four steps what we have discussed so coming to the second step so second step is pinging the address, ip address of the host itself so if it is successful then it shows the host network the host nic is working well what is nic network interface card which a, which a hardware has to it so you can see when you are pinging 192.168.1.50 so here you get the result of the ip address which is available or which is getting connected to so coming to the third point pinging the default gateway from the host if the ping works here you can see that the host is able to communicate with the server and also network and the default gateway also 
So here pinging the default gateway 192.168.1.1 you get this result. So this is the third step we have to perform when you when you have a troubleshooting do, when doing about the connectivity. So finally coming to the fourth and final step of the network connectivity here finally pinging the remote host server A or server B. So in our case that we are pinging the remote host or server A or server B so that if the ping is successful this means that there is a DNS or application layer protocol problem between the host and the server. So however in our case the ping got failed here you can see ping 192.168.2.65 so you can see the result here ping gives you 56 data bytes but the request got timed out in the form of ICMP sequence number 0, 1, 2 and 3. So four, 4 times it tried to connect but the ping got failed. This means that there is no problem in the DNS or the application layer protocol and it is this is the this is the way how we connect or we see the network connectivity between two devices either a host and a switch either a host and the server either a host and a router. So this is, this is these are the four steps of network connectivity before IP addressing we have to check for.